five live-action Rurouni Kenshin movies, ranked worst to best. The live-action adaptations of the popular manga series Rurouni Kenshin have resulted in a memorable and captivating series. However, each installment varies in quality, offering both strong and weak entries. Based on a mid-1990s manga phenomenon, the Rurouni Kenshin films follow former assassin Kenshin Haimura who now wields a reverse blade sword and wanders Japan seeking non-violent atonement during the Meiji era. Delving into provocative philosophical questions around peace, redemption, and the greater good, the movies bring to life fan-favorite comic characters through gripping fight choreography and drama. Since the first chapter released in 2012, five live-action Rurouni Kenshin movies have been released. But with diverging budgets, shifts behind the scenes, and arcs in source material, the films have experienced ups and downs when it comes to critical and audience reception. To determine which movies of the Samurai Saga stand out as genre classics versus those that fail to live up to their potential, this ranking reviews factors like faithfulness, acting, direction, and entertainment value. With several live-action adaptations from Japan, which Rurouni Kenshin provides the most satisfying adaptation for both loyal fans and action movie enthusiasts. While it's not the worst live-action adaptation of all time, the legend end sits at the bottom, underscoring the pitfalls of prioritizing spectacle over substance. Despite a respectable audience reception, leaning heavily into fantastical fight choreography proved to be a double-edged sword. By elongating the runtime to a bloated, thinly spread story without enough narrative substance, the film failed to satisfy. Running nearly twice as long as necessary to conclude the plot, the absurd scale actually diluted the intended epic grandeur. Tatsuya Fujiwara earned praise for bringing a nuanced vulnerability to antagonist Makoto Shisho, with the overstuffed final act rendered the ultimate clash less exhilarating. Though the franchise delivers visual splendor, failing to balance the dazzling sword fights with concise storytelling diminished the finale's emotional impact. Given the series' heights, the film's ambitions were undercut by inadequate scripting, struggling to support the extended indulgence. In the end, flashy production without the foundation of an efficiently paced story made The Legend Ends a disappointing case of style over too little substance, summarizing the pitfalls of prioritizing spectacle over resonant narrative.